Okay, you kicked up. You kicked us off. Yeah, I I logged out and then re logged in to just see if there was something wrong with my login. Are you echoing now? Uh, am I echoing now? Yeah. Yeah, I'm on, I'm on my own. So weird. But no Bluetooth. So I, turned, I don't have anything else in here. Yeah, I, I mean, I have my phone in here, but it's off. It's not on the meeting or anything. So I don't know. So weird because it wasn't happening before and now it's happening for the last, this week, last week and this week. So I don't know what, maybe I need it. Maybe the only other thing I can think of is when I see the other clients, I'm seeing them on the Synergy account. And I see these clients on the account that's my name account. And I'm wondering, the group classes are on my name account. So it may have something to do with this account, that there's something wrong with it or some setting, but I don't know what to look for or Well, not sure why it would be only when you are on. Yeah. We use this account all the time for the classes. But nobody's speaking when you have the classes, so we wouldn't know. Well, they do at the beginning. Yeah. Yeah, because the only other thing would be that, I mean, I'm not technical at all, but um, maybe in like this, the settings where it's like, you know, on the iPad, there's like, I guess the output, your setting versus the volume. Um, I don't know. I'm actually, I'm going to get my iPad and see, but we can always just get started. I can turn the volume way down, but then I can't hear you very well, but try talking right now and let's see. Um, how is this? Is it better? Is it better? Is anyone echoing? That's better. No. Um, I no. I wonder if Zaina had like headphones. I wonder if that would change it at all. I use headphones when I teach the classes, but I was using headphones Yesterday? Yesterday, nobody complained. Now, is it echoing for you? No. No. Yeah, no, you were echoing yesterday when in the rehab course. Yeah. I was, and I had headphones. Oh, no, I didn't. I can go get headphones and see. Is it echoing now for you? Um, do you hear an echo, Allegra? Very faint. Very Oh, now so it's now it's the volume on my iPad. It's just the volume, but then if I turn it down, I can't hear you very well. I have to be like this close and struggling to hear. Yeah, I think maybe if you had a headphones on, like you would hear us, but then we wouldn't hear the feedback that like the echoing in the background. Let me go grab it really quick. Do you think? Yeah. Good. Might as well give it a try. Yeah. We're team synergy tech support. Well, because it, it must be so frustrating for Zaina trying mm -hmm. to answer questions and having to come on and off. I know. I know. Because you can't, you got to like go back and forth. There's a setting on audio on your Zoom and it's echo cancellation. Mm. Go, if you go, down if you go all the way to where the microphone is and go to settings. Oh, I found a setting in Zoom. audio settings. Yeah, audio settings. And well, actually, let me try it before I audio settings. Yeah, I yeah, it's on your um, iPad. Yeah, I'm on my iPad. And then you go all the way, um, and then there's a, 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 a indicator saying advanced options. Oh, um, under under what am I looking at? Under more meeting it? settings. So no, under the, the mute button on the bottom of your screen, right, Kim? Yeah. The mute button. A little I have arrow. The mute button. 
Do you see the little arrow next to it pointing up? I don't have an arrow next to my mute button. I just have the mute. I could touch it and I'll mute myself, but I don't have anything attached to that. Maybe I have to change view. Hold on. Maybe. Let's see. No, I just have the mute button, but nothing. If I mute. You just muted. Yeah. Yeah. It's to the right on my, on all of my devices it's just to the right there's a little like carrot top yeah it says mute stop audio stop video participants huh i don't have it i have mute stop video share content participants and then i have three dots with more participants share screen and recording i can stop the recording Doesn't matter what. And the more under more is chat meeting settings, minimize meeting virtual background or disconnect audio. Mm -hmm. Are you on your iPad, Allegra? Oh, I can't hear you. Yes, I changed my iPad. Yeah. Um, I have general, I have host controls, show my connected time. What is the button I'm looking for? It's just like a little carrot. It says, um, oh, let's see. I don't see it on the iPad. Audio settings. You don't see it Allegra either? Hmm. Not on the iPad, I saw it on the desktop. Hmm. Do you see it, Kim? I don't have the iPad with me. I'm just using my computer right now. Oh, okay. I brought my iPad. I can go get it. Look at Let's it. Gallery view. <laughs> yeah, it might be because it's an app. I wonder if it's. Um, it's not going to have anything. Yeah, it's the. The um. On the, on the computer, it has a, well, you know what, let me do it on my computer. I can mute or I can play, it says auto echo and it says auto or aggressive. Let me see. Yeah. I'll try the headphones and see if that sounds better. Let me see if I can connect them. Okay. Let, let me uh, talk again because I have it on aggressive echo something. Mm -hmm. How does that sound, Allegra? <laughs> okay, hold on. Okay. okay, that's muted. Okay, I'm on my headphones now. I don't know how that sounds for you guys talking. Hi, Zaina. Sounds good. Yeah. Yep. You don't have an echo when I have headphones on. Nope. No. Okay. Well then, echo. for now, I'll use headphones and then, and then I'll call Zoom or something and say, what the heck? <laughs> yeah, that's so frustrating. Because it's not happening on my other iPad. Yeah, it's probably yeah, just it's some probably simple, some simple dumb setting. And... No, okay, mine is sounding like horrible. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Be allegro. <laughs> okay. All right, I'll All troubleshoot right. with Zoom. Sorry. <laughs> At least we found a solution. Yeah. Hello. Hello? Hello? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, let me turn this off. Let me turn this off. Okay, now we can't hear from you, Allegra, at all. If you want to say anything. Oh, there you go. Hi. Okay. Here we go. Okay. <laughs> we found a solution. A semi solution, anyway. No comfortable on the floor here <laughs> uh, you can you can get out and go back to the tv if you want okay i'm fine 
Yeah. Are you? Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm good. I'm just happy to see you now. Talk. I know. <laughs> I know. I mean, I'm going, oh my gosh, I'm echoing everybody. And I, I don't even hear the echo. I never heard the echo. It's making everybody else echo, not me, which is weird. Anyway, I'll, I'll call Zoom or something. If, if Zoom can be called and ask them what the heck. No, might have to set up a meeting. I know, I might have to set up a Zoom and have them hear it. <laughs> um, all right, so off topic, now on topic, was for next week, the theme that I had proposed was strengthen your arms. And the idea in that was to teach people to be able to find ways to strengthen your arms using mostly body weight or understanding how your body weight can help you strengthen your arms. Uh, that gets hard fast. So they're going to be working hard next week, can but you, we can break. Yeah. You know, that ties in really well with my email I sent you about our client. Did you see that? Mm -hmm. it's just today. Robin. Oh yes. Yes. Robin, that does tie in really well with that. that email that you sent. A little uh, thought on that too. So yeah, we can definitely talk about that. Um, the idea, the reason I threw that out there is because we have a lot of clients who need to strengthen their arms and it's interesting to find ways to strengthen their arms. I like strengthening arms against body weight, but like I said, it can get really hard really fast. Um, and so, yeah, that was the theme, strengthen your arms. So Kim, let's talk about that. Kim has a client right now who is also a PT client of mine. She apparently um, hurt her shoulder. Now, she did have previous shoulder stuff. She did tell you that, right, Kim? She's, yeah, she's everything. I mean, yeah. She's right. So she's a extremely hypermobile. So like Ehlers Danlos, extremely hypermobile person, not, not average hypermobile. Uh, a way above average hypermobile. And um, she, her shoulder started hurting and um, her chiropractor said that it's because of push-ups, right? Push-ups and dips? Was she doing dips or? Yeah, yeah we, were using, um, we were using a chair though, you know, elevated. The, yeah, the chair and facing forward or facing backward. Uh, not the, the Pilates chair, but a chair. Oh, a chair. Oh, so what was she doing? You know, so the chair was up. It was a stable chair, and she was yeah. doing little dips. Okay. And she was deciding how much weight to put on her legs or not, or whatever. She was how much weight to put on her feet versus her arms, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So... Um, playing, so she's super hypermobile, so control of her shoulder is poor. The push-ups actually, if done in good form, are, should have been fine. The dips, because the shoulders are behind, that puts them at a um, insufficient pressure point. So somebody who's likely to sublux the shoulder, where sub, subluxing shoulders happen anteriorly, so you put pressure behind you um, here and too weak, the shoulder goes forward. So it was, my guess is not the push-up, but the dip because of the position of the arm. So in somebody who's hypermobile, um, anything with external rotation or arms behind the body is risky. So, uh, yeah, like that, Allegra, yeah. That's, that's the motion because of where the shoulder can anterior translate. So um, I don't think it's something you can beat yourself up about because she has so many things and is so mobile. And um, I actually, chances I up. I don't beat myself up about it. I feel bad. But um, I don't know if she's lost confidence in me, but that's a different issue. But my, my real question is, it, it, what upset me the most was that her chiropractor said, 
she should not be doing push-ups or dips ever. Hypermobile people should not do push-ups or dips. That's exactly what she, she said. And so I'm going to make you feel better. Are you ready? Because that just her chiropr can I can I make you feel better now? Yeah. Her chiropractor said that I shouldn't work with her. Her chiropractor said that I don't know what I'm talking about a hundred times. Her chiropractor doesn't believe she has Ehlers Danlos, and her chiropractor keeps mobilizing her when I think she should be stabilized. So. Yep. So I think this chiro and this chiropractor is the one who told her doctor where to put the injections in for her prolotherapy and then got upset when the injections made her t too tight, apparently, in some parts of her thoracic spine. Okay. So that's the chiropractor. Yeah, I thought I knew there was some background to the chiropractor. And um, I'm, I'm frankly not a big fan of most chiropractors anyway so so and anyway I could go on and on he's supposed to be really well learned I'm sure he's a very well studied person and where we need to be careful with people with hypermobility to that extent is anything that goes into external rotation or behind the body now Oliver has Ehlers-Danlos and he can do push-ups yeah. he has severe Ehlers-Danlos and dislocates his left shoulder but we have to be careful about where we put that left shoulder position only. And I think it so. makes it doubly um, riskier doing it via Zoom. Yes, you're doing it via Zoom too, yeah. And the client doesn't have the best camera. Mm -hmm. you know, cameras here, but, and I have one at home, but if, if she's using a, something that isn't the best, it's pretty hard to see. Yeah. So push-ups are risky because of bad form, the risk of having bad form. And then it's that same anterior exposure of the shoulder if they have bad form. So that's why push-ups are hard. But planks are not hard because they um, create serratus stability, scapular stability. That's what you're really after. So holding a plank is good. But I think building up to a push-up is not a bad idea. It's just that it has to be done very stepwise. And I don't know how far she's gone with it. Um, so, you know, I definitely stepwise. So we can talk about progression and that's actually what's gonna have to happen this, this week with this theme of strengthening your arms because we can't just jump in and expect that people can do 10 perfect push-ups. In fact, most people do very poor push-ups, I think, on, on the whole. So I, for a while, I took it upon myself before the COVID thing that in our classes, I was actually going to reteach push-ups because I just hated what I was seeing in class. And I just felt like, oh, we should do push-ups every class. And I would do them. And then I thought, this is just not good because nobody's doing it well. But it is a great way to strengthen the arms, planks and push-ups. Yeah. And um, I think plank is good for scapular stability, but it really doesn't get to the biceps and triceps the way that push-ups do. So uh, we, the goal would be to progress them into push-ups by the end of the week. And it's, <laughs> it's gonna be a lifetime of pushing up well to get them really into the good push-ups, but that will be sort of the theme, my themed goal. So by my Friday super strong class, I'll have the, them doing some serious push-upping. Um, you know, a week's not long enough to get strong. So those are the people who would be strong enough to really do it well in the first place. So um, if we, but, but we can take it very stepwise. And I say that in the little description that we want to use your body weight to create strength. So, uh, but also you can break it down and go back to shoulder stability, which is TheraBand shoulder stability, right? Um, rotator cuff, external rotation, internal rotation, Biceps, why do we include, you, do you guys understand why we need to strengthen the internal rotation, the external rotation, right? Well, here on external, right? A little bit. Yeah. And then and, is, the, um, the bi is part of the bicep, right? No. Sort of. So here's the little jog down anatomy lane. What is the purpose of the rotator cuff? So you can move your arm around. 
<laughs> yes, yeah, so your arm around to keep it pocket in place. And okay. What what is the rotator cuff? It's the Terry's major or is it minor? And then oh Zena subscapularis and the mm -hmm. oh, there's two more super spinatus. Mm -hmm. Super spinatus yes. and, and feet. Biceps. One right. more. No, not biceps. It's not part of the rotator cuff. All right. I'm going to take you down an atom plane because this is really important. Bear with me for one second. Uh, let's see, where is it? I'm still hearing you. I'm going to share my screen in a minute here and show you. Uh, graphic memory and always remember things. What's that? I know. Infraspinatus. Better. What's that? Infraspinatus, that's one, right? Yeah, that's one. Okay, here I go. I'm gonna share my screen. Aries minor. And I'll take you with me. Okay, you get to see everything on my screen in just a moment here. Okay, can you see my screen now? Oops. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, you see my little skeleton? Yep. Okay. Um, so, rotator cuff. Here we go. Let's take a look at this one. I don't. I didn't make these slides, so bear with me if they're not exactly what we want here. Uh, there's a little video. Let's see if the video. We like the video. Okay. So, oh, I think it's still loading. Four muscles that comprise the group we commonly refer to as the rotator cuff. Oh, it has a little audio too. Can you hear the audio? Together to yes. Form a common action. These four muscles will contract okay. to create tension here at the shoulder joint, which okay. provides stability. All right, I'm going to talk over the guide because I like what I say better than what somebody else does. Because <laughs> I'm a stuck up little snob right now, I'm going to be. All right, so here's our rotator cuff. But if, if you look at the top, if you look over here at the sits, that helps you remember the name of the rotator cuff muscles. Supraspinatus, infraspinatus, teres minor, and subscapularis. Unfortunately, this is not the view that I want. So I'm going to play back again and see if I can get to the view that I want. OK, this view, right? Pause. OK, so the reason for the names, so this is remember them. The spine of the scapula is this right here. This spine right here is the spine of the scapula. So with the names of the muscles, supra, spine, supraspinatus, above the spine of the scapula. Infraspinatus, below the spine of the scapula. Teres minor. Teres minor goes along with the rotator cuff. Teres major, do you guys remember who the best friend of teres major is? Teres minor? Left. <laughs> No. Oh. Terry's major and minor, they were their own I knew that was too lats. Lats. Mm -hmm. but, yes, so Terry's major and the lats are inseparable as far as you're concerned right now. So Terry's major and lats hang together. Here we have, have supraspinatus because it's supra the spine of the scapula. Infraspinatus because it's in the spine of the scapula and Terry's minor. Okay, so then if we flip around, this is where we get to subscapular. So I'll pause it on that next view when he gets around there. All right, so there. He, here we have subscapularis. Why is it called subscapularis? Because it's sub underneath the scapula and attached to the scapula, right? Sub to the scapula. So look where subscapularis' attachment point is, right there. So the subscapularis being attached to the anterior femur. Uh, what's it called? Humerus. <laughs> All right, so it's attached here. If these fibers, sideways fibers, shorten, what's going to happen to your humerus? Which way does it go? Forward. Forward. It's going to go that way. What is that way? Sideways towards the midline would be what kind of rotation? <sighs> 
Which way would this bone rotate? That, that way out to the side of this or this way towards the body? It's gonna These fibers shorten. Abduct. Yeah. Right it's going to go where? Abduct. Oh. No. Fibers, see, this is where they attach, and this is where they attach. If these fibers shorten, this point and this point get closer to each other. Right. If these fibers shorten, this point and this point get closer. If they get closer and they're attached, so, so poke yourself at your anterior medial humerus and pull on those fibers. That's going to make this go in towards the body, rotate medial rotation, inward rotation. Internal rotation or medial rotation. Whereas if I go back here and look at these, these muscles here, look where they attach. They're attaching posterior laterally. So what are they going to do? What action are they going to do? They're going to pull. And which way is this bone going? It's going out around this way. Laterally lateral going. rotation. So one, two, three lateral rotators, and then only one medial, medial rotator. Right? Only one. Oh, so internal that's rotator. So this is subscapularis. Right? Now supraspinatus comes down here, runs here and has this nice groove that it runs in here. This is biceps that comes in here. The long head of the biceps becomes continuous with the shoulder capsule. So it's important for shoulder stability to strengthen the biceps because it becomes part of that capsule and reaches up to create support for the shoulder as well. So the muscles that you're most concerned with in stabilizing the shoulder are um, the rotator cuff muscles, which are supraspinatus. Infraspinatus. Infraspinatus. Teres minor and subscapularis. Subscapularis Sub medially rotates. How do you remember that? What I do is I only remember what subscapularis does, and then I know what everybody else does because it's not what subscapularis does. So I memorize one muscle and its action, and I know what the rest do because it's not the same thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So memorize that sub medially rotates or memorize the location of its attachment point and you'll know what it does. Because if these fibers shorten, this, this arm bone has no, nothing to do but turn inward. It can't turn outward if the fibers are pulling from here, right? So let's see if they have anything else interesting to say here. What else do you have to say? Serve together to form a common action. These four muscles will contract to create tension here at the shoulder joint, which provides stability. Right. By hiding the connective tissue, we can see the underlying head of the humerus, which will be better kept intact. So basically what they're saying to you is also that the capsule, right, the shoulder doesn't have a big socket, right? The only socket we have is the head of the humerus here that hits into the, the scapular fossa here. Right, that's the scapula, here's the head of the humerus. It sits against it, but it doesn't have a socket like the hip does. The acetabulum in the hip has a socket. Right, this is not really a socket. And so our rotator cuff is the thing that holds the shoulder against its socket. Without rotator cuff integrity, this shoulder slides away and can slide downward. So that's not a good thing because then the mechanic of the shoulder isn't ideal and we start pinching and creating bone spurs and causing all kinds of issues. So is that helpful, I hope? Yeah, very helpful. Thank you for the review. I need yeah, to I'm going to just see if there's anything else that I this looks interesting here and that I want you to sit through. No, that's about it. OK, cool. So given that. Uh, I'll stop sharing here in a second. Let me just get back to Zoom. Stop share. Okay. So given that 
anatomy, that's why it is really important to work on, if you're gonna work on arm strength, creating shoulder stability is key. You really can't do a lot of internal external rotation work without using a band or some outside source, a weight or a band or something else. Um, but uh, so that's why I think using a TheraBand to strengthen your arms is a really good tool because then people can have it at home too. So you want to do internal external rotation. The way that I've found, um, you know, it's kind of hard to do in a Zoom class all those motions, but I've found a way because I determined to find a way. So what I've done is extra rotation is easy and you can decide how much range of motion you want to have. Now, somebody who's had an injured shoulder or an unstable shoulder, I don't, I have them restrict their motion to the width of their body. So if I'm restricting motion to the width of my body and going into external rotation, I, I will start, so it's my right hand that's doing the work. I'm holding onto my band. I keep my left hand at my side. Right arm starts at my belly and opens to the width of my body and stops there. Doesn't go wider than my body and back in. That is the safest range of motion. So there's work happening here, but what I want to make sure my shoulder is doing is rotating. I don't want my elbow pulling. I don't want me just kind of, there's all kinds of weird uh, things that people do other than rotate. So the best way to create that rotation, I find is to tell people to glue the arm at the side and rotate it open. Yeah, some glued arm at the side, rotating open. Yeah, if, if that's difficult, taking uh, something and putting it at the side body can, and giving that squeeze inward creates that little more access. This is probably a little, my little block is a little too big, but a towel works really well, or I don't know in here. That. Something a little more squishy or a little smaller works well so that I have something to pivot off of. And some people have a really, I don't have a very indented waist, but some people have a really indented waist or very big lats. And so their arm hangs here, it doesn't even touch their side body. I can touch my side body, so I have a place to rotate from. But if you can't touch your side body, then you need to fill up that space with something. So they have something to squeeze in on. You want them squeezing in so that you get pure rotation. So squeeze in to get pure rotation. The other thing to watch for is obviously scapular positioning. You don't want them rotating here with that shoulder ducking forward, right? You want that back and down shoulder rotating and rotating. Yeah, so that would be your external rotation. So easy to do, even if you don't have a point of attachment. Internal rotation was more uh, difficult for me to find a way to have people internally rotate. So what I did, was what I decided finally how to do it was to come up on knees. Oops, I cut off my head. And then take the foot, one foot out to the side, step on your band. And now I can internally rotate. So I'm going with the body to across. Right, so this works pretty well actually. And um, the only downside to it is there's a little bit of a angle to that band, I think in a more ideal setting, there would be no, um, there would be no angle. It would be level. You could actually even probably do this, uh, hold it up the knee. Now that makes it actually a better line of hold coming in, that's even better. So if you wanted to get fancy, you could have it this way across. So I've just taken it in my opposite hand under and wrapped it around my knee to give myself a pulley point and then I can rotate inward. Yeah. So that could be internal rotation and the most, again, most protective zone is with the shoulder to belly. And the muscle, the primary internal, the internal rotating muscle is subscapularis, right? Subscapularis. <laughs> That's your homework for next week. I'll test you when you get here, if you can remember what the rotator cuff muscles do. So subscapulars. So internal rotation, external rotation are key. The other thing that's, yeah, go ahead. External, right? Kind of like the hitchhiker on the, the former. 
Yeah, you can do external rotation here as well. The thing about this is the range of motion. Right. So if, if it's a healthy shoulder, no problem. Elbows yep. in, rotate open. If it's an injured shoulder, you yep. don't want to go outside the body. So you've got to start here and go to here rather than go from here to out beyond that. So that's our La Croix you, on the reformer is good if it's a healthy shoulder. It's not good if it's an injured shoulder. I renamed yeah. that hitchhiker, you know. <laughs> so somebody who's just subluxed their shoulder, their arms are not going to go this way behind them. So no external rotation, no arms behind somebody who's subluxing shoulder. So somebody super hypermobile. The other muscle that I pointed out was the biceps. Super easy to get a bicep curl, right? Uh, you can do it kneeling, you could do it standing, you just have to step on it or whatever. And we're just bicep curling here. You do both arms together, one arm together. Same thing though, make sure you're not closing down the front of the shoulder that this is working here, right? And then you're getting a good curl up with that arm, yeah? So bicep curl, really easy to do anywhere. So, you know, if, if uh, I was trying to minimize the amount of band work I do so that I could do more body weight work, those would still be part of my repertoire. Those three exercises, internal, external rotation, biceps curl. Some people add triceps press to, to counter the biceps. You know, for a shoulder stability point of view, the other three are more important in my mind. So I definitely go for those three and occasionally add the triceps for a balancing act. Um, okay, so that being said, what do we do? You, and then you can do our hug a tree, our scooping arms, our offering, our salutes, all of those you can do. They are get progressively harder at punching. All of those are great arm exercises. So those will all be part of what I do this coming week. But all of those are to train for body weight work. Now, if we want to make body weight work easiest, I believe the easiest is actually on all fours. So getting to all fours and working serratus press would be the way I would go uh, first. So, so if I was gonna build my way to a plank, which is gonna be the goal for the end of the week or the end of each class next week. So pressing the floor away, back of the neck really long. Here's what I've discovered with this all fours. I can do nothing and be on all fours and just hang out here or I can really press the floor away and get some distance between myself and the floor. So watch, here I am on all fours. Here I am on all fours not doing anything. Here I am with a bit of a press, right? Already the back of my neck got longer. Here I am really pushing through serratus. But I did not puff up my upper back. I just pressed the floor away. I, and if I went to one arm, I could press the floor away. Do you see that? I still didn't puff up my back. I could just press the floor away. Or on this side, press the floor away. I think it's pretty cool. So learning to find that press the floor away without puffing up the upper back, strength, uh, without straining the neck, keeping the head and neck really long here, reaching long and pressing that floor away. Yeah. That's it. So there, even if I, if we stay here for a while and then have people start moving their legs around, trying to keep equal weight on the arms, this is like pre-plank, holding for pre-plank. Then you could lift legs. You could do all kinds of anything you want with the legs and have them try and keep equal weight on both arms for their sort of pre-plank approach. And then we could even go to if you were going to start elbow bending, you could start that here. Now, <coughs> excuse me. I prefer elbow bending with the elbows in because I have yet to discover a way to elbow bend with the elbows out and make sense of it. It um, rolls me to the outside of the hands. I, I don't know. I can't make sense of it. I'm sure somebody can. I'm not the right person. <laughs> the, the way that it, it makes sense to me is to have the shoulders down, scapular, in, scapula engaged, and then elbow bend this way. So here I can keep myself, uh, 
I can keep my shoulder blades on my back, my elbows tight at my sides, and then bend and press back up. Right, and then bend and press back up. Now, if this is too hard for somebody, then you could take them up against the wall and have them start doing it standing against the wall, hands up on the wall. Wait, sorry, I cut off my head again, but you get the idea. And then I can bend and press away and bend and press away at the wall. So that is an option that you have for people who are even too weak for all fours. Yeah, or I have one of my 85 year old clients doing it on the chair, the hands on the chair, and then doing a tiny little bend, press, bend, press. So I start with serratus and then we add a little elbow bend and press. And then we can progress to being on knees. So body half plank. And here, the trick is my shoulders have to stay down. If my shoulders stay down, my chest is over my shoulders. I don't have my hands way out here going down. I have them underneath me here. So we can do either a mini bend and press as a very start, just allowing the elbows to bend without losing the control in the chest trunk and, and serratus, right? Down and up and maybe even over, going over compensating. So rib cage up, looking at the floor, head to the floor and then back to neutral. Yes. So bending head sort of to the floor and then back to neutral. Yeah. And then if they can, that's it, Allegra, yeah. That's the idea. So you can go over too far on purpose to keep the arms in the right place and then push your way back up. And then if it gets to that point where they're like, okay, so I can only bend a little bit, you can have them explore a bigger range by having them just go down. So controlling the way down, control, 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 all the way to the floor. And then it doesn't matter how they get back up. So they can wiggle, push, arch, come back to all fours, and then do it again. Shift forward, control. With that control, slowly, slowly, slowly lowering, right? And then coming back up any which way that they can. And then working the way down. So what are we doing there? Do you guys remember this principle? What's the plank? What kind of muscle contraction is the plank? Isometric. Isometric. What kind of muscle contraction is the lowering? Uh, concentric. Or the, the lowering other? is of the triceps. Yeah. Is eccentric. Eccentric of the triceps, yeah. Yes. And then to come back up would be the concentric. So the hardest motion is coming up. So we're training and we're training the same muscles. We're just doing it stepwise. So you could even have them go partway down and hold to get that isometric strength. And then a little more and hold, a little more and hold, and then all the way down. And then just get back up and start working that down motion. Eventually with working that down motion, they'll eventually be able to come back up. Right. And then you could do that same series that we just did on knees, on feet, right? So that you're ending up at the end of it with a strong body rate right, going down and up with that little motion and then working down, right? And then lowering if they can't lift back up. And then what you can do to start getting them to come back up, whether on knees or on feet. Yeah, let's see, go ahead, I'll give you a moment, sorry is get the hands underneath, tuck the toes under or the knees, either way, belly lifts, take a deep breath in, exhale, and just try and press back up from the floor. Yeah, and try and do that with as little body wave as possible, and that's gonna get them stronger. So just working on the lowering, getting them to the floor, taking a deep breath in, and exhale, press with as little sneak as possible. Yeah, so that, the, that's sort of the breakdown if we were gonna get them through that whole thing. And the other little piece that I could throw in there that could be helpful that I sometimes use is training the belly on the floor. So I always say that push-ups 
are as much an oblique exercise as they are an arm exercise. So learning to use the body to help with that motion is key as well. So sometimes I'll have them go, instead of going into that full plank like that, I'll have them go um, holding, pushing, and lifting up here on tippy toes. Right, so I'm really pushing that floor away, finding this strength. And then I can, if I can hold that, then I can start walking those feet out, keep that strength, and then I can find the plank there. And then I'm just set for where I want to go with the push-up. So, but the idea is that in that up position, let's go to like her where she is, then her belly is lifting. So try and take more weight to your hands, less weight to your feet by using your abs to do it. So you'll keep lifting your weight from your tummy, lift your belly up to the sky. Keep lifting the belly up, 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 up to the sky. So more weight on your arms and legs, less on your feet. Good, now walk your feet in. Good, keep walking your feet in. Good, now press your tummy up to the sky, up into your back. Lift, 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 push the floor away with your shoulders. That's it. Go get up on your tippy toes even maybe. Yes, that's it. Or even to the backs of your feet. If you could take that much weight on your hands and off your feet, you go to the tippy toes or the backs of your feet. Yes, that's it. That's it, Allegra. Yes. Now really use those abs. Do you feel that ab work? Then if you can take that work and put it into your plank, your push-up all of a sudden becomes easier, a lot easier. So see if you can find that in the plank. Find that same lift in your belly. At, so do a little elbow bend. Now lift your belly the way you had it up at the top. Yes. Good. And lift the belly up, 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 go up. Yeah. Could you feel it though? Good push up belly. Yes, that's it. Nice, up belly, good. That's really good form though. Yeah? Yeah. I can't tell you how good many Kim, I that's... in yoga. You can't see What's me. that? I said, I can't tell you, like in yoga, I could, I could do those much better, but now I'm stronger in different places, so. But that was really challenging, thank you. Yeah, well, get going, let's go. <laughs> I'm strong. We're going to be arm strong after, after um, this week. It will be set us on a new trend of arm strengthening. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, does that help? I hope gives you a little bit of something to work with. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I just had a, a, a question when, if nobody, if you have a question, Kim, or. Go yeah, go ahead. So I just had a, a question about, um, plank on the reformer which always like mystifies me but um this one lady she was she she looked really strong but I just felt she was like super puffing in her chest and I was thinking if I was going to give her a correction I feel like I would want her to be a little a little bit more flattened in the shoulder blades like more, like more of a, a flat plane on her back rather than so puffy. So what do you think about that? Is it okay that she was so puffy? Like, yeah. Mm, yeah. That or because she was really- So like that. that's the typical overcompensation for um, cerebus. It's the first part, it's the typical what? Sorry, my head. <laughs> It's a typical overcompensation for serratus. So instead oh. of pushing the, sh the floor away, they're lifting their back up, they're hunching, right? And, and then that puts the head right in the turtle position. Now I'm turtle head. Yeah. Instead of nice long neck, serratus press away, back of the neck long. Okay. So it's, I would have her not push as far away from the floor. I would have her not try so hard to push away. Okay. So, um, She's, and I would do a lot of serratus strengthening. Okay. So, 
Can you repeat that, Allegra? Sorry. I'm oh, sorry. I just said, what, what do you mean not pushing so far away from the floor? She's on the arm the foot bar, like maybe bend her elbows a little bit or? No, don't let her push this far away. Oh, I see. What let, you're her, let her come down with her chest. Let her oh, open the chest. Gotcha. Now from open chest, wide chest, push the bar away. Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay. Gotcha. Don't let her round push up okay. into the upper back. Okay. Yeah, it's yeah, just, it's, it's, a, it's, yeah, it's just, it's hard also because we can't like touch, you know, someone. So I'm like, I'm, next time if I see her, I'll like know what to say, but I was just observing the first time. So I'm just like, huh, okay. Yeah, yeah. It's a hard correction to make because people have no idea what you're trying to tell them to do. Yeah. The other way that I sometimes do it is to tell them to do a bridge and put their arms out because the plank, a kneeling plank, this is my bridge. Here, shoulders are on the floor, right? My head is on the floor, my shoulders are on the floor. That's my bridge with my arms up. And I want to take exactly that and flip it over. Heads on the floor, shoulders are on the floor. Yeah? Same line. So if, if you can feel it in a bridge with that door frame arm shoulders, then you can flip over and try and get that same feeling in the plank. So that might be a good helpful way to do it. If you have them in a private, of course. Or you can talk them through it while you're doing bottom lift on the reformer, for example, have them take their arms up and say, feel your shoulder blades on there. We're gonna do plank in a minute. I want you to have the same flat feeling through your back and the same feeling through the back of your head and your shoulders. Okay, that's, yeah, that's helpful. It's like, cause not only do you get to feel it in a, a different uh, direction, like not only supine, but prone. So yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah, no, thank you. Good question. Yeah, um, any others? Yeah. All right then. Okay. All right then. Well, thank you guys. Thank you for helping me troubleshoot uh, the echo too. And I will see why this is happening with Zoom. I'll have to uh, look at it too, and maybe we'll have a phone call, a Zoom call with Zoom, and see <laughs> <laughs> what the heck is happening. Good luck. I know it's so, so frustrating because you're like not you're halfway on the other side of the world. I know. It's okay. It's just annoying. I'm like, when did this start happening and why? Yeah. I don't know. So. All right. All righty. Well, thank you guys. Have a great rest of the day and tomorrow and weekend. And I will see you all soon. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. Bye, Zaina. All right. Bye, you guys. Thanks. Okay. okay. Bye. Bye.